This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. through labyrinth style turns and all of the trimmings that come along with it it is the australian online supercars championship this sponsored by west end mazda and so many more that find themselves at road atlanta a track which often finds itself as one of the more difficult when it comes to the calendar a track which many have to respect more rather than attack as we hear on what is SimSpeed Esports Network, find ourselves looking at qualifying taking place right now for 36 laps worth of action that we'll see in the championship just in a little bit. It's a new team here in the contribute. It's Jake Sperry joined with, of course, retaining face Scott Fountain. Scott, has to be said here, there is going to be a very interesting qualifying practice times that came in. Looks very interesting at the moment, and I reckon that this one is going to be a lot closer than at some of the other rounds of the championship this season. Yes, you're exactly right, Jake. Welcome, everybody, to another Friday night. Western Mazda, Australian Online Supercar Championship. Also want to thank LeBlanc for jumping on board and sponsoring as well. It's a bit different to be uh, commentating with a new person. Normally, I have Jay Kennedy to talk to, but... Uh, I've got someone even better than that, Jake Sperry. It's awesome to be in the box. Uh, it is, uh, it's been a while since I've heard your voice commentating, and it's great to have you back in with our team, mate. Well, no worries at all, but of course, this is 20 minutes of open qualification, which means some very important points of contention. First of all, these lap times have to be clean. They have to make sure they stay on the track and not pick up any instant points getting a time in early is going to be a lot more beneficial than getting it in late secondly when time expires after 20 minutes you get until the end of your lap to sort everything out and that can be so crucial who can get themselves the final lap in let's look on board then with the number 22 machine of brady myers getting a big wiggle coming up through notorious turn number five arguably the most difficult bit of track on the circuit before now heading through these two right hand corners which lead up to this long back straight which is a couple of kinks turns eight and nine for the 10a 10b chicane and fonty it has to be said that this is an absolutely beautiful section of track and the prime overtaking opportunity yes you're exactly right jake it is a fantastic circuit one which is uh, very difficult to master we're coming down here into a heavy braking zone and you can easily overshoot this and uh, find yourself on the outside of the grass there and then you've kind of mucked up your whole run over this hill here onto the front straight which uh, yeah I'm sure we're going to see plenty of action unfold tonight we have seen many a time in the V8 supercar this track really turned it on and I'm sure it's, nothing's going to be different tonight and on cue, Brady Myers takes pole position for the moment, 119.869. It's Jordan Ross second, Ian Ford in third. Brett Loxton finds himself now up in fourth position. Big push to the line from Carl Stokes as well. He looks to set his first lap time then as he goes to start a flying lap, struggling a little bit with Guy Leach uh, in tow as well. But really, these first lap times are going to be all about trying to make sure that they get themselves in as well as possible as we look at Joshua Anderson and the Vendaval Sim Racing Machine. Anderson, one of the new signings over with them at the moment, and we'll see what he'll be able to do as he gets himself over the line, and he, he will now look to start his flying lap as well. Yes, there we go. Just uh, you could see coming into the braking zone there at the end of Australia. He was just getting himself ready, potentially holding up the car behind. I'm sure we're going to see a very fast lap from Joshua, providing cars don't get in his way. But uh, yeah, great field of drivers out here tonight. Uh, Jack Boyd there sitting in P5. He's going all right at the moment. Expect him to move up there 
uh, towards the end of qualifying. Good to see Ian Ford as well. Oh, a bit of a moment there for Joshua Anderson, though. Yeah, he just had that little bit of a moment. He had to be careful about that. Could so easily have gone wrong for him at that stage. But Anderson does well to hold on and to continue on his lap as he now makes his way out of seven and now on this long run down this straight. And this is the most important bit of racing that he's going to have to try and get right. That first lap becomes so vital. Only 66,000 splitting the top two at the moment. Top 10 split by just four tenths of a second all the way down to Zach Best. One vehicle running off very aggressive when it came to 10A there from Anderson and he has to bail the lap. Yeah, there we go. He's bailed out early. He's going to have a few more opportunities to do so as we're seeing movement on the leaderboards. Now we're currently focusing on Stephen Barger. Stephen had... Oh, there we go. He just flick over to Marlon there and he uh, potentially was on a lap. And uh, it's all over for him, so he's going to go back to the pits and reset. Currently, we have Brady Myers still at the top of the time sheet there. Uh, Ian Ford sitting in second, Jordan Ross in third. Those two guys switched places a moment ago. Brett Loxton in P4, and Jack Boyd P5, Thomas McMillan six. Harley Haber, he's just dropped back. He was in P6 there for a moment. Uh, Michael Cracknell, he's got some pretty good pace in him. So, interesting to see how Michael goes. Brendan Hobson, hey, good to see his name back out there. He was a bit unwell, and uh, we gave him a shout-out a few weeks ago, and uh, great to see him back out there turning some laps. It hasn't been the same without Brenton being out on track. Then Nick Cummings sitting in P number 10. Jack yes, Boyd. he's moved himself up as we look at Jack G. Boyd right now in the Gone Rogue Mode sports machine, heading through to number 7, and now looking towards 8, he's got... One of the uh, Craig Moretta racing cars just behind him as well, giving him the tow, which is not ideal. He doesn't have any tow of his own, as you can just see uh, looking backwards now, looking forwards towards 10 a 10 the Small kink fight, you go down the hill, such a difficult braking zone here, because you've got to be absolutely on it as he heads through that left and then in through the right in this beautiful downhill section. Try and get back out on circuit and get back with the lap done. And, rushing through the final corner can Boyd find anything more 120.430 that will not be helpful in terms of pushing that lap time this track is going to rub it in and make things a little bit more difficult as Jordan Ross now we focus on part of the new additions to the Evolution Racing Team roster and that lovely white machine now starts to rile up through the hills and now getting a bit of a slide there going through but not really too many worries there no, exactly. Jordan Ross, very smooth operator, and uh, it was a bit of a shock for me to see him change teams during the silly season, but uh, he has a lot to offer the Evolution Racing team, and so do all the other drivers that they've managed to pick up. Um, yeah, it's good to see, you know, a shake-up during the off-season, and uh, expect to see new teams right at the front, I'm sure. Yeah, and those new teams are looking to try and make that push. He's just behind Michael Taliancic at the moment, trying to make his probe forward as he looks to try and go through 10A, 10B, and now get his lap time completely sorted then as he will make that charge underneath Suzuki Bridge and now down the hill looking for a lap as we're heading towards halfway in qualification. Answers to 119.838 and that's pole position just there. Jordan Ross with a fantastic lap time to put himself there. And this is where those dynamic track conditions come in. Maybe got a little bit of cloud cover that helped find those couple tents. Yeah, you're exactly right. Just seeing Mullen McMullen make his way up the timesheets there, currently sitting in P number six. So uh, we saw him have an incident there a few moments ago. Expect to see Marlon right there in the hunt. Currently focused on air for Ian Ford. Goes to the top now. So times are really, really starting to make their way up there. Thomas McMillan moves up to P number four. We currently have Brett Loxton in P5. So Harley Haber, he's managed, he's dropped back a few positions in P number eight. Cracknell ninth and Brenton Robson rounding out the ten. Yes, and this is what we're seeing here. These times have started to come down. That one performance racing car of Thomas McMillan has done very well to get up into fourth position. A change of his own with the uh, dismantling of All-Star Motorsports. Maybe some have said McMillan's change into the team wasn't ideal, but at the moment he's proving all the doubters wrong right now. But 
These times are starting to come down. They're starting to get very interesting. For example, Cracknell and Haber are tied dead even to the thousandth when it comes on time. Let's go on board with Cracknell, actually, for the moment in the 205 machine. The Zuba is looking to try and make that push to 10 a 10 b Traffic of Marlon McMullen gets out of the way and looking for that big push as he's on an outlap at the moment. Does have Brett Loxton behind, though, and I'm wondering here whether McMullen is going to be uh, the slingshot for Loxton over this lap. Yeah, I think you're right, mate. He uh, potentially could be. Loxton is a very, very fast driver. Won the championship last season. Not quite there this season. We've had the uh, competition really turn it up. And, uh, yeah, Brett's had a few little hiccups and dramas getting caught up in other people's stuff. So expect him to be fast around this track because he's always gone pretty good around here. Well, Brett Loxton seemingly has an affinity for the labyrinth-style twists and turns around this road lance track, but look how heavy the traffic is. He's going to have to thread some needles. Kane Hewson and Scott Clark are going to have to be the two. He's got to get around. Oh. Clarky boy, get out the way. That was a little bit of an impeding moment there from Scott Clark. Didn't quite get off the racing line quick enough, and that's the sort of thing you've got to be careful about as Clark finds himself in contact oh. with Marlon McMullen and bang into the fence. There we go, so Marlon really pushing on the limits there. He's tangled himself up, but as Brett Loxton comes down this long straight, I love this this long straight, it's so cool, and if you get it right, you have uh, yeah, you generally have a pretty good lap. Oh, we're seeing a car go off there in front. Of him. There we go, Stephen Barger not having the most ideal lap, but can Loxton improve his time? I don't think so. We saw him get held up there just a few corners ago as he comes back out onto the front straight. Oh, no nope. improvement. Hey, there we go. So, it's no an improvement. Track instant point. So he, he will not improve. improve that time. Harley Haber though goes up into fourth position with Ian Ford now top of the timing stands on a 119.754. We are under 10 minutes to go, and this is where lap times become so crucial. Brady Myers though 22 finds himself going up the hill, looking vehicle off on the left hand side, getting out of the way is that very stranded Scott Clark. But Myers has Brenton Hobson for a bit of help here. And that difference of about three tenths of a second could come in handy around here. Three tenths means nothing at the moment. And to talk about just how close this field is at the moment, top 20 split by one second. There we go. It is super close around this track. And uh, yeah, it is probably one of the best tracks in the world, I have to say. It's so... Uh... You know, just the flow of it really you really need to be on your toes the whole time and every time we race here in a v supercar well it never disappoints so uh i'm sure we're gonna see plenty of action but we're seeing this this leaderboard really mix it up has anyone got an answer for ian ford though is the next question brady myers coming down the last section of the track onto the front straight is he gonna do it oh yeah, no no not quite he has made an improvement but not quite enough so uh yes not quite got there but we look at jack boyd at the moment in seventh position right now he's hoping to find himself a good lap time as he heads himself locking up massively through the lefts and rights and he's hoping for something to happen as he gets himself down the hill under suzuki bridge and charging over towards that start finish line the yokohama bridge he does a 120.467, so he's not finding anything that is really lightning sharp at the moment. Look at your top 10 at the moment. In second position, it's Jordan Ross. It's 1-2 Evolution Racing Team. And look at the draft he's managing to procure off of James Scott in the 088. Carl Stokes moves up into 11th position as he crosses his way over the line. But now Jordan Ross, with heavy amounts of draft, down that stretch, he may just have the best shot yet to try and sneak pole. Here we go. Down the hill. Yep, down the hill, Jordan Ross. Does he have it in him to finish this lap off? Oh, yes, he does. Oh. Here we go. Bang, straight to the top. Does Jordan Ross, that draft certainly helped from his teammate there. So, uh, yeah, it's amazing how, how the draft plays such a big effect on completing a good lap. And, we just uh, we just saw that guy slog it now on screen. Currently sitting in P23, and we've got a very very angry uh, that sleuth car behind, so he's aborted that lap now. 
That was Guy Leach going by and Ian Ford himself now on a flying lap with six minutes to go. Vehicle behind has a massive sideways moment. That was Brenton Hobson who will have to abandon ship as he has abandoned the top 10 now with Michael Cracknell now holding that top 10 position because Joshua Anderson has moved himself up into eighth position in the Vendaval Sim Racing Machine. So now for Ian Ford, he's got to find half a tenth of a second at the moment to close down Jordan Ross. And this is probably one of the biggest bastions of improvement that you'll see in Australian sim racing, which is probably one of the top places you need to go if you want to find your skills getting a little bit better. Someone like Ian Ford wants to master and own his craft as he makes his way out of 10B. Does have James Scott just in front, who of course was that big help, but he dives onto pit road, and he's looking to try and make his way over the start-finish line. He Gonna finds himself home. with no improvement on time due to an off-track instant point, so he will have to try and find something else. Another lap by. Five-minute warning, though, Fonte. There we go. Harley Haber currently on screen. Looks like he's setting himself up there for a lap, so can we see an improvement? from Harley, Brett Loxton currently on the lap, or potentially maybe we've got an off track there, he would have had to jump off the gas, there we go, aborts the lap, so uh, Jack Boyd now, or he's also aborted his lap, Harley Haber, he comes around that last turn, such a hard turn to get right, and he's on the lap, we're going to stay with him for this, see if he can improve on his time, currently sitting in P4, running that very bright pink and white livery, at least it stands out, and uh, can Harley improve? Can he improve indeed? Heading through the S's section now, looking down the hill and looking to try and push back up it once again and up through this left-hander of five, which is so difficult. He's aggressive on the inside curve, massively aggressive on the outside curve. Big wiggle as he came off the exit there. The rear tires really screaming out in torture as he now makes his way through six and then through seven as well as he looks to try and get that pink LeBlanc car to move through. And they say that real men wear pink. Well, at the moment, Harley is showing that real men drive pink. Yes, yes, you're exactly he right. Abandoned it. He did just abandon it. So now we focus on Brady Myers. Can Brady Myers? Does he have the goods to pull himself up and put him onto that top step? Very interesting seeing these SimWorks cars. So I used to seeing Hyper on the side of them. They got a new backer for this season, and it's uh, yeah, fantastic to see all the move arounds of sponsors and, and teams having more investment from uh, certain companies, which is absolutely great for the industry. have to agree with you there, Fonty. Here comes Myers down the hill, and it's going to have to be an outlap because that is definitely not a quick time. 24-9 overall. Thomas McMillan, though, keep a focus on him, and he looks to try and make his big one-performance push through the field and we'll see if he's going to be able to find exactly what he wants he's gone and probably just let through one there nope not quite as joshua anderson actually goes and gets through but he backs off it as well so both of them deciding nope can't do it and they'll have one shot laps to go through as we are under two and a half minutes looking at ford here we go in ford he's on a flyer he hasn't made a mistake yet can he nudge jordan ross out the way and take that top step he will start in the ideal position on the track. We come into the last section. Has he got it right? Yes, he looks like he's got the first left right. He's got the second part of the turn right. Getting the power down. Now, this part here is so crucial because the car really gets light, and then you're powering all the way through, slightly lifting off the throttle and back on it. Has he improved? No improvement there. So potentially, the track may be getting a little bit slower at this point in the session, Jake. It may be, and it's at just the worst time as well. And I don't think he'll get back out and around if he's not too quick. As Carl Stokes takes a very pedestrian line through the club layout of the chicane. Here's Bradley Ratu, though, at the moment. 24th position, he currently fires himself. As I just see a little move up the order for Brenton Hobson, who moves up to fourth position Whoa. right now. What a lap that time from fantastic. Hobbo 88. There we go, Hobo 88, he ain't finishing in sixth in this one, well maybe he might, but pretty good uh, time there from Brenton, been out of the seat for quite a while, and while he's come back, he's come back with vengeance. Oh, that's all 
that he needs to see. Here's Harley Haber, though, trying to find his lap time. Under a minute to go, he will get another lap out of this if he so wants to. Ross, Ford, Myers, Hobson, Haber, McMillan, Loxton, Boyd, Anderson, McMullen, your top 10 as things look. Here's Harley Haber, though. Big, big wiggle coming up over the brow. Wiggle again as he heads himself through turn number 12, the final corner. And he does not improve lap time with under 40 seconds to go. This becomes crunch time. Who will find themselves over the line last with not much remaining in terms of this time? Someone like Mitchell McLeod, for example, could be someone on the bubble as he looks to try and find himself with one more lap left in terms of his run timer expiring 15 seconds remaining and he should just about maybe get over brady myers should get another lap if he needs to and he will try and push for that line five four three two he's gonna get over the line with a second to spare he will be the last man over to go check if black comes out mcleod 120 flat up tonight great lap from mcleod and now more laps come in here's the likes of jordan ross to focus on the likes of gary cooper maybe could find themselves in harley haber in the 21 keep focus because haber is going to be pushing like a madman possessed to get up inside that top five further and find a couple of tenths of a second can he do anything to make this one just a little bit better answer as he goes through the final quarter can haber find good. anything more in the 21 it yes. looks good Ooh, but it's a 120 flat right. he's just short in terms of his time that's not brilliant wayne pengilly now trying to make his way to line he's down in 28th position on a 120.8 he was so influential in the v8 supercars online premier series bathurst 1000 for all the wrong reasons and he does not find a reason to go any quicker ian ford finds himself not going quicker as he absolutely slams it into the wall as he couldn't find himself one more opportunity but the question becomes now brady myers where is he coming out answer is final corner can he find one more little lap that gets him a tenth and a half, maybe two tenths more. Oh, he cannot. No is the answer for Brady Myers. That's everyone across the line. And this is how the grid will stack. There we go. So in first position, we have Jordan Rice. Well done to him. Ian Ford in P number two. Brady Myers third. Brendan Hobson, big clap for you, mate. P4. Harley Haber fifth. Thomas McMillan sixth. Brett Loxton seventh. And Jack Boyd eighth. And that was the first four rows for you. In ninth position is Mitchell McLeod with Joshua Anderson rounding out the top 10. Marlon McMullen starts 11th with Mitchell Cracknell, or Michael Cracknell, sorry, in 12th position. Kyle Stokes and Nick Cummings share row seven. Row eight is Michael Talianjic and Matt Morris. There we go. And then row number nine, we've got Zach Best, James Scott, Greg Sharp and Brian Borg. James Duckworth, Damien Johnson, Jamie McKnight, and Bradley Ratu in 24th. And then you've got Jacob Knight and Kai Sloggett in row 13. Row 14, we'll see David Nenadic and Wayne Pengilly in that row. Luke Page and Kane Hewson on row 15 with Zach Baker and Guy Leach on row 16. And there we go to 33rd position, David Kinman, Mark Newton 34th, Gary Cooper 35th. Uh, Stephen Varg a little bit further back than I'd expect, 36. Stuart uh, Coulter in 37th, Matthew Deer 38. Simon Pitt and Christian Smart round out 39th and 40th. And then you got Matt Lear pervading, got Scott Clark, Brenton O'Brien, Mitchell Bales, Brett Hender, Shane Evans, likes of Chris Barnes and Matthew Clowett, the 48 that set times. The one who didn't was the 29 of Jake Maloney. But... For Jordan Ross, he is at the front of the field. 36 laps of racing. There is one competition caution that will come out at some stage over the course of this event. And these drivers have to be absolutely on it to see if this one's going. Crucially, though, Evolution Racing Team 1 and 2 at the front of the field. And then from there, it is four different vehicles in four different positions as the likes of Myers, Hobson, Haber, and McMillan look to be the best of the rest you can go further six and six loxton and boyd part of two different teams mitchell mcleod josh anderson it really is a who's who for teams and the star drivers up at the front of the field but expect the unexpected when it comes to road atlanta 
This is one of those circuits where everyone has to be absolutely on it and careful over the course of 36 laps. Remember that this one is also sponsored by the likes of LeBlanc and so many others to go. Sam Blacklock Media and Knight Rider Design have put their works in, but two minutes then on the clock. Engine notes will rise. Here we go. Let's and get ourselves underway. out of the way. Yes, we are clear, clear. We are green and we are going. It is a good start from, e uh, from Jordan Ross at the front. Ford going hard to the defense because there was Brady Myers trying to sneak away down on the inside. Could he manage to steal that away? He's got the chance as he heads himself up into two as one goes off in the background there. Didn't quite catch who that was as Myers has to play defensive as Hobson. Oh, 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 as well. Yeah, there we go, Locks and Hobson come together there, not the ideal start for them. Maybe they've got away with that with not too much damage, but certainly not the best start for those guys. Everyone else getting, oh, we've got a car in the background there, actually around two, I can't exactly see who that is. There we go, Matt Morris, he is dropping back and dropping back quickly. Not an ideal start for him, but uh, reasonably, yeah, get some replays up soon, but Harley Hager has moved himself up into P number four. Currently, we have Jordan Ross, Ian Ford, Brady Myers, Harley Haber, Thomas McMillan, Marlon McMullen, Joshua Anderson, Jack Boyd, Mitchell McLeod. Now, what a fantastic qualifying from him. He was a bit back down 23rd there. He's currently up in uh, ninth. He did start in ninth with that last lap flyer. He's had a few BBs tonight, is Mitch McLeod. He'll be on it. Expect him to be right at the front if that's the case. But uh, getting back to the racing, Harley. Oh, oh, oh here we go. That was Carl oh, Stokes for Evolution Racing Team having a moment and look at the freight train try and find a way by. He's down 18th position at the moment. Oh, this could be close. Racing Team machine there. That was mighty, Damien mighty tight. And yeah, you could definitely see there, Fonty, just how disastrous that could have been as now that mid-pack looks to get really difficult on board from Kai Sloggett's perspective, trying to get down the inside of the LeBlanc 24 machine and can't quite manage it. No, fantastic start there from Kai. It was, uh, yeah, pretty close between those two Evolution Racing Team cars. That could have ended in tears if uh, Jamie just came over that little bit further. Look at Brady Myers right now as we get a LeBlanc instant replay up for you at the moment. And, well, this is where it's key as they headed through the opening section. Look at Brett Loxton's perspective. Has a little wiggle, but now he's heading up through in this very tight section. You really don't have anywhere to go on the opening lap. And the moment uh, Hobson came around, unsighted, nowhere to go. You have to say, instant bystand from Brett Loxton. You'll be mightily disappointed at what has happened there in terms of the opening lap. Just look at this from Matt Morris as well. And he gets a tag from behind and hard. He spears into the inside wall as we go back live to action as we got this fantastic battle continuing on here as Brady Myers tries to hold off Harley Haver on the outside who yields as they make their way to turn number one so right now it seems that Redback Racing having to stay behind the TTL Esports machine as Taliancic at the moment now finds himself going very very slow damage I have to feel as he now loses a whole lot of positions if not a slowdown yeah, here we go. We're going to get the instant replay. Thanks to LeBlanc, I reckon that someone's tagged him coming into the end of the straight. We'll just have a look at this replay. I reckon he looks reasonably quick there, but he has already sustained the damage, so um, potentially cut the wall somewhere. Um, oh, well, okay. they both went so, off, and yeah, then he came back on, and it has to be a slowdown. Same for James Duckworth. Yeah, there we go. So slow down for them. Bit of damage to his car already though, just looking at this grid, we've currently got Jordan Ross, look at this battle, there is, uh, Jordan Ross has opened a little bit of a gap so far, so he's got 1.2 seconds, but Brady Myers is right on the back of that Ian Ford car, and Harley Haber is not much further behind him either. No, he certainly isn't, as we're looking at Harley Haber's perspective here, just three tenths of a second off of this battle for second position, and Ian Ford effectively having to play rear guard gunner at the moment from Brady Myers, who is starting to accelerate his development absolutely fantastically after joining the team last year. Little look into turn number one, but he's just trying to get in the mirrors at the moment. Haber may be in more of a position to attack at the moment as he tries to find a way through at turn number three, and he's not quite there. Not normally the place 
he gets the overtakes up out of five he's probably where you're going to be seeing the moves up in towards six but you can Here see just go. how single track line it goes and Haber is wrestling all over the back of Myers yeah do you know that's what we see from these redback cars as well especially Harley's car is very fast in the opening laps of the race and generally struggles towards the end of the stint so his car is looking very racy now he's not going to look out potentially though oh here we go oh. we've seen a little bit of a tag there um was that ford checking up a little bit too fast but now harley is under all sorts of pressure we've got thomas mcmillan and marlon mcmillan really wanting to get this done harley has the inside line though so he is going to get the advantage but here comes oh here comes marlon mcmillan and he's going to give him a little bit of a tap on the way through saying don't chop me off buddy here we go oh, and it's Oh, here we go. Harley's going to get the run. Harley's going to get the run. Right. Can't quite get it. Big defensive hold from Brady Myers as there Harley Haber just about holds on to position as now Josh Anderson gets on the back of the train as well, which now stacks back five, six, seven maybe as they go into turn number one once again. They're losing Jordan Ross. They're losing Ian Ford. And now look at this alternative line taken by Thomas McMillan there through turn number two. And now it's a case of just finding a bit of space here in this train, trying to get some breathing room because it's all just come uh, one massive choke point at the moment here, Fonty, which they all need to worry about. Yeah, you're exactly right. This has given a massive gap there to Ian Ford, so he's finally got some breathing room, and he's just hoping that these guys behind keep fighting because it's only going to work better for him. Jordan Ross, however, opened up that gap hugely, but we look at this battle a little bit further back there for a 12th and 13th. Kyle Stokes, Greg Sharp going at it. Here we go. Stokes up the inside. He's probably going to get the job done here too, just by the nature of the track, and job done. Is he going to be able to hold him out though is the next question because we've got the Evolution Racing Team car of Jamie McKnight coming and coming at a great rate of knots and here he goes, he's going to pop out, he's going to have to go to the outside or lift off the throttle potentially too. Here he goes, he's going to have the inside line but who has got the bigger set of brake pads is the next question. Maybe he's going to try on both of them. Oh, this oh. could be dangerous. Oh, there we go. What a fantastic move there by Jamie McKnight. Class up stuff there. I have to feel that was slightly coordinated. Whoa. Big moment in the background. And that there could be another few positions gone for the Penrite machine. And just like that, there you see Greg Sharp really struggling. As now on the inside goes through uh, Jake and, uh, James Scott sorry, to make the position up. And that's Sharp backwards now into 16th position. That was nightmarish in the way that that one ended up. But we've got a few more little battles going on as well. This is Brenton Hobson. Look at the recovery job that he's been managed to do. He's now up into the top 20 as Brett Loxton seemingly doesn't find himself in any position this event. Now look at the ERT cars once again going at it. Jamie McKnight probably uh, thought he had this one covered, but there's a big lockup coming in from Carl Stokes who gets it sorted, but he will be sitting and duck for 10A 10B. Yeah, you saw Jamie there, kind of let him go. He uh, he knows that Kyle's probably got that little bit more pace than him and he could just sit behind him. This could actually work in his advantage, save that little bit of fuel and uh, look after those tyres and just work with his teammate. That's what you got to do to try and pull that gap to the cars behind. So, so we look a little bit further up the front now. So Ian Ford's actually closed that gap to Jordan Ross quite considerably. That's at 1.5 seconds now. Brady Myers has closed the gap also on Ian Ford. So... Harley Haber's coming along with him, but uh, Ian's in a very difficult position when he's punching air uh, just in front of him, so expect there, that battle to heat up very, very soon. And it's the KRF machine of Michael Cracknell that's got to be worried because there's Joshua Anderson trying to find a way through for the Vendaval Sim Racing team, and now up the hill into notorious turn number five, which catches so many drivers out is the question of at what point does the train disintegrate at the moment it's at Cracknell who cannot hold the pace of the drivers in front and Anderson's going to know this here Fonty he's going to know that he's going to have to try and find a way through to stay with the train that's starting to break away up in front there is no ifs no buts no ands Anderson's got to make the move this lap on Cracknell Yes, he certainly does. He has the speed and a uh, very good driver as Joshua Anderson. Doesn't really run the supercar too often, although we have seen him a bit more this season by currently riding on board with Nick Cummings. He's looking up the inside there of Anderson, but not going to have 
the speed, but Anderson locked the brake coming into that difficult braking position. And we've got McLeod hanging right on the back there. McLeod will pounce at any opportunity. And look, he's got the run there now. Is he going to have the speed to get him into turn one? He's certainly going to look at it. No. Nope. Not there we quite go. There. And there we see how McLeod's going to have to play that patience game. And this is what happens here. Brady Myers and in forward Brady Myers jump in. Now starts to find himself really close to Ian Ford. And it's pretty much a back and forward uh, battle at the front of the field. Myers has found the pace to pull himself back to Ford. And at the moment, Ian Ford may be the biggest target on the back at the moment. No chance then into six. No chance will come along into seven either, unless you're brave. It will have to be 10A, 10B. And look how close he gets. Struggles a little bit off the exit. No surprises there. But now he's got to really have a good run. And look at how that acceleration works for the ERT machines. Their pickups over this winter period have really helped accelerate their developments. Oh, yes, yeah, certainly is. They're going to be a team which is going to be hard to beat this year. We've got Jared Philsell there. Uh, I've still got Ian Ford. He's the original guy. Here we go. Thomas McMillan. Just Under all off. sorts of pressure from Marlon. Marlon looking very racy. He's, uh, yeah, he is very, very fast. He has won official uh, Monday night supercar championships. And uh, we haven't uh -oh. seen at all. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Here we go. Bradley Ratu. Not the ideal position that he wants to be in facing the wall. So watching a replay now, what's happened here. So we've seen, Thanks. ooh, there we go, Mark Newton just fired it off there. And uh, I'm not sure what happened. Oh, ooh. oh, unfortunate incident, that one. It's a difficult position. That was a hard hit as well. He's going to need to get himself a new half a million dollar supercar very quickly. Oh, more than that, I think there was Zach Best there in a one performance. And oh, it was just the lightest of touches through turn eight there it's a small kink it means absolutely nothing but two into one doesn't go and effectively they didn't give each other enough room as we uh, uh, saw a lot of action uh, happening there as we uh, look at christian smart's instant right now for the gone rogue motorsports oh, team he was starting to check up as they headed through Ooh. and looking for the inside all oh, bit too aggressive there uh, as smart gets a big instant and he goes backwards through turn number one, like Vettel did in 2012, through turn four of Interlagos. That tells you how much skill he had. There we go. So we've seen incidents there. The same car caused, uh, well, was caught up in two of the same incidents, but looking up the front now, we've got Ian Ford's drop back. He's sitting in P4 now. So uh, I'm not sure if we can see what has happened there. Um, but yeah, that has certainly changed it around. So we saw Ford really losing his pace, maybe driving to a fuel number as he's lost a fair bit of speed very, very quickly. The pit go, window so. is officially open this lap, and may Ian Ford, who has been known as a notorious fuel saver in a V8 supercar, maybe that's what he's trying to do, maybe save a little bit of fuel, put a little bit less when it comes into that pit stop and gain back the time that he has lost over this stage. On board with Josh Anderson, is actually onto pit road, comes Brian Borg for the Premier Esports Racing Team as right now Harley Haber finds himself in third Joshua Anderson though under pressure still from Nick Cummings just behind and the TTL Esports machine has had a couple looks and arguably goes under the radar as one of those drivers who can actually get a really good result on his day at the moment a top 10 he will definitely take to the bank in cash but for the moment Nick Cummings is just going to have to play that patience game look at this train that comes along you can easily gain three four positions with a lightning stop yeah you certainly could i was just watching the replay that back there to see what happened for Ian ford big lock up into turn one and um nearly threw it off the track which allowed brady myers and harley able to get past so um although uh, there is you know he's dropped back to fourth i think he's still in a good position and he could certainly save fuel from this but he's got to watch out from the guys coming from behind certainly does as at the moment Ian Ford in that fourth position looking at Harley Haber and the podium but he's got to be careful about behind as well incredibly aggressive there it was Ian Ford because Thomas McMillan just behind will try and pounce on any weakness but Haber at the moment just happy to sit there behind the driver in second position that being of course Brady Myers trying to chase down Jordan Ross who's got a little bit of traffic in LeBlanc colors to deal with at the moment that won't be useful uh, 
this time being, but more crucially than that, he's picking up a toe at the moment, is Jordan Ross at the front of the field. He'll now move himself to the inside. The LeBlanc car gets out of the way and gets a very nice run through. That was Stephen Varga, who's been involved in all sorts of incidents throughout today. But for the time being, at least, positions decidingly not changing at the moment but who can blame them they are all nose to tail apart from the slight breakaway at the moment that has been gotten yeah you're exactly right mate it's uh 2.7 seconds separating first and second so there we go leader in the pit wow. lane so expect the pit lane now to line up with everybody else uh responding to Jordan Ross, we're watching this battle back here, Wayne Pengilly. I'll tell you what, Wayne has come a long way. I know that you said that in uh, Bathurst, in the V8 Scots Bathurst 1000, it was a cause of an incident, but in the last couple of months, Wayne has really picked up his game and come a long way. It was last week, uh, last Friday night, we saw some great results from Wayne and really fighting up the top there. So he's currently sitting in P16 and uh, doing a fantastic job at it. He is as out of pit row comes Jordan Ross, P24 at the moment, and he will get ahead of the next pack. So now the question becomes, how quick can these drivers go on old tyres and fuel and get themselves that perfect strategy call? Remember, there is that competition caution that comes into play as well. That will come in most likely when the pit stop window has finished, but we don't know when that will happen. It may come out here during the middle of the pit stop cycle, which would throw a massive spanner in the works, which does mean that sometimes drivers go in earlier rather than later. Big slide from Ford coming out to turn 10B, and that will compromise the run, heading through 11, 12, and all the way to 1. Yeah, it certainly will, mate. It's, uh, yeah, pretty interesting. We've got Marlon. Yep, McMullen is in the pit lane, so everyone is starting to respond with Jordan Ross, who's currently still sitting back there in 24th. His battle has not given out, though, between Ian Ford and Harley Haber. He is uh, a man on a hunt, and although he made a mistake, oh, there we go, just flying off such a difficult set of corners. Starting to see the traffic now as well come into play as Brady Myers. Oh, oh that was miscommunication was, there. He had oh, to go hard to the inside, and all of this is allowing Haber the yeah. chance to get in. Oh. Maybe a bit of team communication, oh. and he gives him a shot. And oh, there, there we go. Uh, here we go. Here we go. And Ford's going to push him all the way through because he wants to see going forward uh, the remainders of Brady Myers up in front. So Haber, for all of that looser position, and now Ian Ford can go for the net race lead at this stage. This oh, one's starting to eat up. Don't dangerous. go three wide. Go Let's three go three wide. wide. Here we go, this is on. I tell you what, Ian Ford has some big set of brakes on him. Side by side do these guys go, and this is going to leave Brady really susceptible to a move here. And he's going to go from... Oh, here we go, it's on. Freight it's train. on for young and old freight train coming through. Oh, a little bit of a bump there for My Myers as well. McMillan certainly showing his nose through that section. That was and intense. Crucially, Brady's got a bit of damage on the front as well. That front right fender does not look nice on Brady Myers' machine. And as such, he is struggling to get himself right into play. You can see it there, just on that camera angle we just had there. He's just got that bit of damage, and that is going to be telling at the moment for Myers as he now drops back four posi or three positions over the course of that last lap. So for the moment, Ian Ford now finds himself back in control. But what's more, Harley Haber starts to find himself on that aggressive tack. A very aggressive driver. He looks to the outside. Oh, doesn't fantastic. quite find it. Does he have another look or is he a bit more patient this time? He has another little look oh, and he gets a bit cow down the And now here comes McMillan. Yes, it certainly is. So now we see Harley Haber really in a vulnerable position. McMillan is coming. He uh, has a good drive through the turn, does Haber, but just can't, couldn't quite get the power down there versus uh, Ian Ford, and now he's under all sorts of pressure, but he's going to be given it here. Here we go. Move done there. What a fantastic move by uh, Mitch McLeod. Oh, oh, Haber 
Meyer, and that's right onto pit road as well. Myers gets around it. Haber's going to have to dive onto the lane now after that incident. And Harley Haber finds himself demoted down the pack after the spin. LeBlanc instant replay for you up on screen. And this is exactly how it played out. So Haber's coming down the hill. Ooh, I think he got a shot from McMillan there. If not, yeah. he got a little bit of a wiggle. There was the shot. He managed to hold it. And crucially, he kept it out of the wall as well on board from McMillan. Yeah, so I don't think McMillan was expecting him. Yeah, he didn't expect him to come into the pit lane, so uh, just tagged him slightly. It is a, such a difficult pit lane to get right when you are battling with people as we go back live. Now, this battle between Ford and McMillan is really starting to heat up. I tell you what, uh, Thomas has some serious pace later on in the stint. We could see that Harley really struggling with those rear tyres, which is what we normally see with Harley. He tends to be very fast on his first cup opening laps, but then drops off, so... He's gone into the pit lane. He would have lost a bit of time there with that incident, but he has managed to get away with it, I feel. Didn't have any contact with anybody, so let's see where he comes out of the lane. Here's a little look, but it's not going to be anything more there from Thomas McMillan as Ian Ford holds station at the moment at the front of this pack. Harley Haber has come out in 21st position, but the question becomes, where is he in comparison to Jordan Ross? Nick Cummings has come out ahead in 19th. Marlon McMullen has jumped them both in 17th, but they're just in front of Brady Myers and Jordan Ross a mile down the road at the moment. Currently scored as 13th position at the moment. As in comes Thomas McMillan to try and make his stop. Michael Cracknell, Joshua Anderson all join here on lap 16 of 36. And the one pit stop that's needed, Jane McKnight decides he also wants to come down in. And the bulk of the stops coming in as Wayne Pengilly joins. Yeah, there we go. So pit lane getting very, very active. But this battle back here, P25 is not resting at all. Matt Morris, Matt Morris has met, yeah, he's regained himself there. We saw him have an incident in turn one as we see one of the gone road cars go into the pit. They do well. Look at Thomas McMillan actually come out after his stop. He's come out behind Brady Myers, I do believe. Yes, yeah, six tenths of a second the gap. So that means that McMillan's done well, but Brady has really profited off of the fresh rubber but crucially having that fresh attacking rubber is going to be so crucial for this race but look at the gap Jordan Ross has now managed to get after all that fighting at the front of that pack in the pit stop window that gap is five seconds at the moment and still staying out longer and longer is Ian Ford as Jack Boyd decides uh, after a quiet race so far to dive down in as McLeod stays out there we go yes jordan ross certainly is the man to beat in this race he is very very fast but a 16.5 second stop and uh brady myers 15.3 thomas mcmillan 15.4 marlon mcmillan 17.7 .7. so he is the longest stop here we go what has happened to ford he's had a moment he's had a big moment because he's dropped a position let's get ourselves a leblanc instant replay see exactly what has just happened to that evolution racing team machine uh, of ian ford's 15 heading through turn number one he gets a Whoa. big slide on entry gets himself a good tokyo and well he manages oh. to get more tokyo oh. and ultimately he just says it but style points he didn't quite hold your drift there so we'll have to take deductions there we go that opened up a position here for mitch mcleod first race he's led in a little while as much He'll be stoked about this one. Expect to see him coming to the pit lane, I reckon, at the end of this lap. It wasn't very, very quick in the qualifying. Managed to put it on ninth and uh, currently leading the race. I reckon he'll come out potentially maybe in around about seventh or eighth after all the pit stops are done. We've seen this battle here. Zach Baker, Joshua Anderson, these guys going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And we've got Harley Haber there in the background. Big lunge from Haber. Yes, and you're seeing here Zach Best uh, hasn't yet come down and make the stop. The other two have, Anderson and Haber, and they both make their way through almost as now Haber and Best go at it side by side on the run. From Michael Cracknell's perspective, he's staring at this, and he's starting oh, to see it. Almost a bit of contact there between the two as they angle for oh, position. Big oh, bump to the side. Oh, they it together. Zach Best has to yield. Oh, and no, he gets the shot back. Bit, Bang! Yeah. And that's poor form. Yeah, that was pretty poor form. It was uh, pretty ambitious there by Harley, but he kept it clean, and that was probably a little bit over the top there by Zach, and I think he is going to probably take a little bit more damage than what Harley would. 
Very, very true. Here's Marlon McMullen, though, for the Craig Moretta Racing Team. He's kept incredibly quiet through this event. He has kept himself out of trouble. But if now's the time to pounce, this is as good a time as any for him right now. Thomas McMillan, yes, he's got the fresher rubber on him, but Marlon McMullen has proven today that he's in the mood to battle, as you can see there, bouncing all over that outside curve was Thomas McMillan. I think McMullen's hoping that he's got himself a good opportunity to sneak a top five. Yeah, you're certainly right. Marlon is uh, on the pace and so is uh, Thomas McMullen. Fantastic drive from him so far in the race. I'm just looking back at this battle between Cracknell and Harley Haber. Harley would have sustained a bit of damage in the rear end of that car being hit by Zach Best and well it's just opening up the gap there for uh, Mike Sorry, Zach Baker, we must be corrected. Made the contact yes. there with Harley Haber, not Zach Best. So uh, I, f I think that uh, Zach Best and Harley Haber are good friends. So I was uh, a little bit, I was questioning that one, but we've just seen Harley have to jump on the brakes there as we, yeah, I think he got a slowdown through slow the and damage of the track. Yeah, big damage for Harley as he was Look at this. Here's Jordan Ross struggling here with David Nenani. Oh, forces yeah. him off the track. Oh. And, oh, that was a bit risky there from Jordan Ross. Didn't leave racing room. Nenadic had to run off, and he'll have to serve the slowdown penalty too. One of the big let-offs, or the worst parts, is now Marlon McMullen still there holding in seventh position. But now Ford has lost even more time in this one. He's 13 seconds back and he's falling out of contention here for the race victory. Yeah, I think that those uh, Dunlops are nearly down to the cords. This is only giving up all of oh. track position there to Mitch McLeod, who is looking very racing and still doing pretty good times out there as Mitch, considering his tyres are nearly 20 laps old. Look at that car still stay out, though. And Ian Ford, look how much he is struggling. He is pretty much down to canvases at the moment, the way he's been ragging on those tyres. And he's really just taking everything out of them that he possibly can. It's bold, it's brave. And you can see that he's letting through vehicles. I think he's got himself an issue of some sort, maybe even of the technical variety. Maybe we could be looking at for Ian Ford, because that is not natural to let through lap traffic through as then Danich finally decides to pit from third. Yeah. There we go, four cars left to pit. I reckon that uh, he's trying to hang out for that safety car. So these drivers don't know when that safety car is. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see, can he make it? Oh, he's got big trouble, Massive. there's nothing left. Nothing left of those rears, he's gotta pull in now. He's he gotta pull to. in, because those tires are done, they're finished, so uh, if he... There you go, he so two shot. cars. Yeah, two cars only left to pit, but Ian Ford is shot on those tyres, and it is very clear to see that Ford has long overstayed his welcome on that set of tyres. He will drop a multitude of positions back down the field, and I wonder if he'll even have a top 10 by the time his stop is over and done with. In comes race leader Mitchell McLeod for the talking machine, for the talking team, sorry. And does Ian Ford decide? No! Wow. Ian Ford is desperate to stay out for a caution that may or may not come. Oh, we are definitely going to see it. Yeah, the caution's going to hurt him majorly. And uh, look at him, he just, there's no point in him continuing on. Is he trying to test something or do something? I don't really know. Or is he trying to uh, get the trophy for uh, no tyres left? Uh, we don't know, but this is only dropping him further and further back. Here's Jake Maloney at the moment. He's trying to get on this Guy Leach train at the moment. And just in front of Guy Leach is Damien Johnstone, who is gone rogue motorsports through and through. Little look behind as uh, there's a bit of a little shot. One and around Kinman and Page coming together. And, well, they hold it just. But now the next little pack is going to try attacking uh, at the moment. And around the outside there of Kinman, they go. And just like that, Brenton O'Brien gets himself a position, and up he goes one more. Yep, there's battles all through this field, and that's what this track is great for. We see it all the time whenever we come here. Battles everywhere, now we're seeing this battle between Harley Haber and Mitch McLeod. These guys currently sitting in P10, P11, and uh, Mitch doing a fantastic job. 
have to agree he is doing a brilliant job and his pit stop has brought him out in a pretty good position there after all of that so lap 21 of 36 here then at road atlanta jordan ross firmly in the driving seat if it wasn't for the fact that ian ford has to come down in and make a stop on his absolutely shot tires that he has on his vehicle at the moment little battle though guy leach and jake maloney still going at it maloney looking then to the outside which is the inside for turn number nine but the outside of 10a which is always a little bit more difficult to get right but he gets it done before the braking zone and just like that jake maloney gains another position having to start from the back of the field here today maloney but up to 23rd he will take that with a slice of cake Yes, he certainly will, but looking at this gap between uh, Jordan Ross and uh, Brady Myers, Brady Myers has closed that gap hugely, 1.2 seconds, and then there's another 4.7 seconds separating himself, uh, Brady Myers, that is, and Thomas McMillan, Marlon McMillan, looking very racy on the back of McMillan. So many Mc, McMillan, McMillan, all the same, isn't it? Might, might as well be the Scottish Racing Championships the amount of looks well. that we've got at the moment but <laughs> right now Brady Myers is the man on the move as he looks to try and get within one second, and, a second. Get and collect the draft and he's got it he's within seven tenths at the moment of Jordan Ross who's seemingly on this second stint and pitting a lot earlier than everyone else will be faltering on those tyres and that's something to keep in mind as Nick Cummings is now up in seventh position or lost a position even Here's a replay of going on as the caution comes out. There we go. Caution is out. And what is this going to do? Uh, not too much because we won't see drivers really come in, but you're going to see them really start to look after these tyres. And uh, yeah, it looks like a slowdown. Yeah, and really just That's trying to look down the rubber. That's a slowdown penalty. He gets very aggressive through 10B. And just like that, Nick Cummings has to drop the position. But the caution comes out then. Uh, road Atlanta and it's a very important one Ian Ford leads the field at the moment but he will be due to come down in and make that pit stop and he'll probably try and do that under caution will be the best bet so Jordan Ross your effective race leader at the moment Brady Myers currently in second position right now and this becomes a case of Jordan Ross broke away in the early stages mainly thanks to Ian Ford Will he have that luxury, and will he be able to do so in the final dash to the end? Yeah, well, it's going to be interesting to see where Ian Ford comes out on the stop. What? Didn't stay out. out. But, uh, there we go. So the moment, is but next lap. Yeah, this is only dangerous for him, really, because the whole field's going to back up, and uh, he's going to drop oh, out. Oh, oh, my. He's got past the safety car, has he? No, he just had this massive moment. Yes, he has just jumped by the safety car. He'll have to check up and wait for it. Uh, but my goodness me, he had to get on the binders quick. And even that wasn't ideal as there is uh, the iRacing roof first safety car looking to make its way past Ian Ford and does so out on track. So Ian Ford, uh, I don't know what he's got left canvases and he might as well run the safety car at this point. There we go. So Ian Ford, where is he going to come out during this pit stop? Harley Haber sitting back there in 11th. Mitch McLeod in P number 10. Mick Cracknell, great drive from him so far in this race. Uh, Joshua Anderson sitting in P8. Uh, one name who we haven't looked at, Jake Maloney. Now he started in third, uh, 49th position. Yeah. 49th. And, uh, and he's up to 23rd, so we always see him. Whenever he turns up here on a Friday night, he generally doesn't jump in and qualify. He likes to start from the back and have a little bit of a uh, battle coming up through the field and generally finishes pretty good. We've actually seen him get on the podium during a uh, endurance event by doing that. Great race we've had though, so far though, isn't it, Jake? I have to agree with you. It has been very action-packed as Maloney does his traditional last to wherever challenge at whatever circuit he finds himself at. But at the moment, this field very much stacking up nicely. So Ian Ford holds the lead of this one at the moment. He is due to come down in. There is one mandatory stop required. Question becomes when he comes down and makes that stop. Uh, not a case of if. Second position at the moment finds itself to be Jordan Ross who is 
probably in the best position possible at the moment in this field with Brady Myers currently in third as things stand right now. And this is going to be really key at the moment, what we're seeing, Ponty. These drivers here inside the top eight, I think, will have a legitimate shot of victory right now. And Ian Ford finally decides to dive down onto pit road. Those tyres were cooked and a little bit more than that. And I'm wondering if he's got any sort of rim left on those tyres when he takes them off in the start. Yeah, yep, you're certainly right, mate. It's uh, going to be interesting to see where he comes out. I reckon that Brady Myers is probably the man on the charge here. So these guys jumping in for tyres, maybe they think that it's going to be more beneficial for them. We are on that 25 or 36, so 11 to go. I think we're going to see these guys who are going to be at the back with new rubber on try and charge through in as quickly as possible, potentially we see incidents unfold from that just due to the nature of the track as Ian Ford now leaves his pit bay where's he going to come out? Well he's not going to come out in the top 30, he is going to come out yes he is in 27th so uh, where can Ian Ford make his way up to? I think that Brady Myers is the man on a charge here, he has three lap newer tyres than what Jordan Ross does and uh, Marlon McMullen behind Thomas McMullen could be under pressure from Jack Boyd who is on lap 8 lap old tyres so expect Jack to maybe potentially even get up here and get a podium and that's going to be crucial because Mitchell McLeod is also on 4 lap old tyres, he really stretched his stint and did so well, Ross Myers, McMillan, McMullen Boyd, Cummings, your top 6 out there on track Anderson, Cracknell, McLeod and Haber, your top 10 and anyone inside that top 10 has a legitimate shot of taking a victory out from this one. At the moment, you have to say, it feels like it has been Jordan Ross's race at the moment. He's had control of the majority of this one. He pitted early as a conscious decision, but that decision to come down, make that stop, is going to be very, very important. Safety car will come in then on this lap. The lights are off on top of the iRacing roof first safety car as they make their way towards turns 10A and 10B, rounding this long turn number nine, sweeping corner as you get this fantastic camera angle of 10A and 10B, which is so often attacked here in iRacing, but you cannot be too aggressive with it. For Jordan Ross, though, it's a case of holding on because you'll have 11 laps worth of battling left to do as he has control of the field behind him goes. wait wait and now decides to let off and get the power down we are green once again here at the circuit of road atlanta yeah look at marlon mcmullen he was caught sleeping there because there's a huge gap between third and fourth jack boyd wants to put all sorts of pressure on him i think we're going to see incidents potentially with all of these new car with all of these new tires on these cars we've got side by side action here between uh, Mitch McLeod, oh Harley Haver bending it in there from nowhere, comes from nowhere to try and fire it up the inside of Mitch McLeod, but uh, Mitch says no thank you sir trying to get a bit greedy then maybe in the early stages, Ross has done very well then on that restart but he's still got Brady Myers following in tow as they head through 6 and 7, still there is Nick Cummings who could be massive help to Brady Myers if he can get himself up through the train heavy amounts of curb there from Myers but now Jordan Ross has for the first time in this event to defend potentially towards 10A, 10B. Now surely is the time for Brady Myers to strike when the iron is hot against yep. the old tyres. And look at this, angling oh. down towards the inside. Jordan Ross with maybe not much left to He's defend. He's going to do it on the outside. On the He's going to do it on the outside. He is going to do it. In. And look at that around oh, the outside. Fantastic. Brady and his bunch have got oh. him. And look at that shot back. Here we go, a little bit of a shunt on the way through. McMillan's on the inside, and this is going to leave Jordan Ross really open here. He's going to lose both of them, and Marlon's going to get a position as well. So there you go, from hero to zero in a matter of corners, and uh, Jordan will not be too happy about that. Give potentially Marlon a little bit of a shunt. Now, this is where it gets dangerous through this point, because both these guys will not give up. Oh, I tell you no, what, Jordan won't. will not be happy about that three positions lost he was in the grass actually coming off the exit of the final corner he had to be so careful about that josh anderson still trying to find a way 
past Nick Cummings a little bit further down in the train. He can't find it, and look at that just behind. There was the talking machine trying to get past the KRF Motorsports car. There was uh, a certain Mitchell McLeod trying to find himself an opportunity, but again, oh. Anderson just sitting there, and he drives it in deep through turn six. Looking at turn seven, he's got to be careful here as Nick Cummings tries to find a way past Jack Boyd. And at the moment, Boyd holding his own at the moment inside the top five. He may have gone rogue, but at the moment, he is probably doing the most anti-rogue thing possible. He's staying very calm and resolute. There we go. A big stamp from our director. Nine different teams in the top ten. That's what I absolutely love. This is uh, the competition in this field in this series is getting better and better and the teams are really stepping up to the plate. Brenton Hobson around, absolutely going for him. He was really on a charge up to P12 after his first lap incident and now he's going to lose another spot there. So back to P18 as we see the man, Jake Maloney. He is up to 17th, so fantastic drive for him gained six positions in the opening two laps of this restart and that's been very very telling Boyd though still under pressure at the moment from that TTL uh, sixth place machine of Nick Cummins the only team to have two inside the top ten at the moment which shows you how competitive this league truly is Anderson sitting and waiting as Brady Myers at the front just getting a little bit of a breakaway at the moment it seems just being able to stretch his leg slightly as a Ooh. big, again, lunge through goes a go. certain driver as he gets it down the inside. And now he'll have this whole long run to work with, but he couldn't quite get it on the exit. No, he certainly couldn't. This is going to leave him open here to Cracknell. Cracknell's going to look for the outside. Is he going to have the brakes on him? No, Mitch McLeod hanging there in the background now. Mitch should be sticking to the right, I reckon, on this one because that gap, is he going to go to the left? Sorry. Oh, he's going to stick in the middle. He's going to wait to see where he's got to go. Oh! Big moment there. That ah. was, uh, yeah, a little bit hard there. It's such a difficult one to get right. We see that so many times in uh, the supercar racing around this track. That corner causes many incidents. And Josh Anderson, I think, said day done. I don't think he was too happy about that one. He left just enough room and maybe just pinched down a bit too slightly. Didn't quite get a good angle of it. But from there, jo uh, Josh Anderson, well, that's going to hurt him. And he will not be happy at the way that his race has effectively been ended, which now allows Carl Stokes and Mitchell McLeod back inside of the top 10 for the moment. Rob Blanc instant replay then up on your screen right now. And McLeod did lose a couple of spots because look at this. He had to check right up through that next section. And did he get a shot from Haver down the inside? Answer is he just had to get right out of the gas there because of the fact that he was on that outside. Mega run from Carl Stokes. Oh. And all that closing speed. There was coupled with probably a slowdown penalty as well through 10A. That pretty much signaled the, the, the sign that was there for that. As now Jack Boyd looks to attack the limping Jordan Ross on old tyres. Here we go. So Jack Boyd is trying to get the move done. We've seen Jack do phenomenal things. We've seen cars go wide there. This is going to leave Harley Haber an opportunity here, I think. It is, and Haber's looking for that seventh place. Oh. As around goes Brenton Hobson once again. There is no synergy in his sim racing tonight, and that much has to be said by the way that he's had incident upon incident upon incident. He gets himself towards 10 a 10 b gets there on the brakes, Ooh, a little worry, gets a tyre on the grass, and he's lucky that he's not collected anyone else in that one. That for Brenton Hobson will pretty much sum up proceedings here this evening at this circuit of Road Atlanta. Cracknell, though, still holding on his round. Ooh, go to I answer. believe it's Tali Antic, yeah, from the Duke Sim Racing. Yeah, there we go, not ideal for Michael Tali Antic. He, uh, we've seen some great pace out of him recently as well, and a night to forget, that's for sure. Brenton Hobson, though, getting back to him, he, uh, he's been away from the Viet Supercar for a very long time, boarding out some personal illness, and uh, great to see him back out there, and uh, really had the pace of qualifying. He's still on P4. Oh, oh. Oh. That Maloney. was Jake Maloney trying to go around the outside to make that move. It was a very interesting little battle. Let's get it on board with Maloney's perspective. He's hard on that right-hand side, does get the overlap but ultimately there that was Tali Antic, I think just trying to manufacture a bit more room for himself Maloney left with nowhere to go and ultimately turns him on his quarter panel and 
That much there for Maloney. Yeah, he has two choices there. Turn the man or back out. As now, look at this, just by McMullen. Because Jordan Ross having to go defensive into turn number one with just six laps to go. go. And look at this, up and under coming right, from right. Jack Boy trying. Jack Boy not finding. No, he's certainly not. That's a... Uh... We just saw an incident there, just on that replay, and um, you can't really put supercars too wide through that corner successfully. Maybe a smaller car like a Skip Barber or something, yeah, not a problem, but one of these big beasts certainly don't want to go side by side through that corner, just the nature of the understeer of these types of vehicles, but we were seeing Jack Boyd, a very racy Jack Boyd at that, but uh, Jordan Ross is doing a fantastic job at holding him back. Is he going to get the run as we're coming on to the big long straight, straight that his uh, drafting plays such a huge part in this is he going to be able to outbreak him my guess is potentially not we just see how good Jordan Ross is under brakes and uh, Jack Boyd is a fantastic driver but just can't quite seem to get there he's going to show his nose though this time he's going to look nope. but not quite close enough look at Marlon struggling in front though he is really struggling for a grip locked at left front and uh, oh this car is not looking good for Jordan Ross. No, Jack Boyd clearly thinks he's the quicker driver, clearly wants to find a way through, but clearly isn't getting anything against the great defensive resiliency of Jordan Ross. That much is very, very true. But look at the front of the field right now. Thomas McMillan still there, still within about a good half a second then of Brady Myers. He's still in the window with five to go of making a push for the front. But still, Jack Boyd trying to wait and muscle the way through. And of course, Nick Cummings now on the back of this train will be desperate to try and get through if, if Jack Boyd certainly can't uh, at the moment. Boyd may just have to seed. Yes, Boyd, he's playing a very uh, safe game. He's certainly not getting in there and hitting him, which is great to see. He wants to get the pass done cleanly, which uh, gains your respect. There we go, Brenton Hobson out of the race. This man we haven't focused on too much in this uh, in this race, and that is Jamie McKnight, Wayne Pringilly. These two guys are pretty good friends in real life, and uh, good to see them out battling here on track. Jamie didn't have the greatest of qualifying. He's sitting back in 23rd, but he's managed to make his way up to P number 12. As Wayne is looking very racy, and Jamie is going to hold that inside line and make Wayne go the long way. This is only pulling Greg Sharp into the mix as well bunching up and that much is very very telling as now there's just four laps to go when they cross the line and now this is the next worry that they're going to have time of the essence when do you get your elbows out when do you start attacking just behind there we saw that attacking element but no attacking elements then from the front of the field and there was no chance for Maloney just yet to try and make that move he is pretty much stuck as he tries to find a way by on Greg Sharp looking all over, looks left, looks right, hoping for something. McLeod as well, looking at this battle for eighth position now, trying to find a way past Haber. Yeah, so McLeod has lost that position. He's managed to catch him back up. We saw a few, uh, about 10 minutes ago, Mitch really have an issue there when the uh, car went off in front of him, but this car looks very fast now. Now, he is on the newest tyres out of anybody else, so... Harley's brother will certainly be struggling and uh, Mitch, I reckon Mitch could certainly make his way up there past those two guys in front of him. That's very, very true. The gap almost a second at the front. Ian Ford, though, who stopped for tyres, he's up in 17th position. He was waiting for the caution to come out. It was a little bit too late and as such, he's now got to try and make a long charge back and it was tactical error that we rarely see from Ian Ford that put him out of it. Still though, with three laps to go, Jordan Ross under pressure, Jack Boyd still not quite there into turn number one. He may be gone rogue motorsport, but Jordan Ross is very much holding his own. Marlon McMullen there in third position, just a little bit down the road. Neither of them in a position really to chase that down and Ian Ford, he's got the fastest car on track at the moment and that much very telling as he looks to find himself past into 16th and look at that there's Jake Maloney just in front that's just the proof of Ford's pace at the moment yeah yep you're certainly right there Jake he's uh very very fast but he's just going to run out of laps to do it could still potentially get a maybe a top uh 12 here um but I don't look. Know and um, here we go he's going to get the job done and done cleanly 
these cars in front of him, Battling is certainly going to work in the end Ford's favour. Look at the pace that he has got. He's going to get a good run out of that turn. On to the big long straight as we're getting very sharp. Slightly have a little technical glitch there. Ian Ford's going to get the huge toe coming down the straight. And Jamie McKnight is oh, making wow. win. Pen Gilly go on the outside. He may get it done this time though. No, no but Jamie. Jamie has the brake pads. Just though, but look how compromised he is on the exit. He Little wiggle. Here's the chance for Pengeli. He picks a pocket and he gets himself the chance to go through on the inside of 12. And that's how you make a move. move. But look at this. But Knight tries to come back. Everyone oh, goes to the inside. Oh my this goodness me! Greg Sharp gets a tap from Ian Ford. Oh, Maloney gets himself through as well. Goodbye, Greg Sharp, with two to go. Oh, I'd just like to give our director a big round of applause there. Fantastic shot there from Jay Kennedy himself. No good at commentating, but when it comes to directing, he's right in there. My word. But Jack Boyd now under pressure. Here's Nick Cummings trying to think about a look down the inside at six with two laps to go. Lap and a half even. No, can't quite get it. It's eight tenths at the front for Brady Myers, who still leads this one out overall. Poor run off of the exit there for Nick Cummings. He's not going to have a chance go and make that move and he's got to maybe look behind him at Michael Cracknell who could find himself maybe closing down that gap he's under no pressure just right now at the moment Jamie McKnight though has the world and his neighbor behind him at the moment he doesn't want his neighbors there because here comes Jake Maloney thinking about okay maybe I've got a chance to make this move at the moment not quite there not quite able oh, to make that lunge oh, unless he make goes it. Oh, here we go. Ian oh Ford. what a wow. move what a move, and Ian Ford's going to try and follow around the outside, and he gets that one done as well with the fresh rubber. Last lap then of this event, Brady Myers leads this one out right here at the front of the field. Thomas McMillan has desperately tried to stay with, but ultimately Myers has proven the pace is too much. The pack, though, falls behind Boyd, and Nick Cummings, who has really struggled to find a way through, and he's all over the shot trying to find a line through, and this is going to allow Cracknell maybe the chance to push plus one if he can get that run. Haber's been so good out of five, he may have this shot to run it up at six. But for the moment, at least, it seems that My Mitch Cr uh, Michael Cracknell can't quite find himself in the right position. Back straight now for Brady Myers. Thomas McMillan's hoping for a rare mistake out of young Brady. And Marlon McMullen, don't discredit him. That podium will go a long way if he can hold on for three more corners. But the 10 A and B comes Brady Myers and it may be Brady's bunch that will get himself a very happy finish come the end of this one but it was through hard work and resilience and having to scrap and claw for this one Brady Myers final corner comes looming and he will take the win for TTL Esports in round five of AOSC oh what a fantastic drive from brady really deserved that one i said that he was going to be the fastest after that stop and well he certainly proved that one great drive from the rest of the field no, oh Ian Ford. Ford. bang into the yeah. tires and gone and pretty much out of this event pushing the instant limit too hard and like that ian ford is done the cloud has wrecked it coming over the start finish line but your winner of this one very much is Brady Myers, the last of the few drivers coming through. Matt Morris definitely struggling, and it looks like he's had damage coming over to the end. If not, he's out of fuel, definitely out of fuel, it looks like, as he will limp down the hill over the line. And that will pretty much signal that. Let's get classified results up on your screen. This is how everything has finished here at Road Atlanta. There we go. So well done to this man, Brady Myers. Fantastic drive, buddy. You really deserve that. You were super, super fast there. And uh, yeah, once that, uh, once the uh, safety car came out, you always looked fast before that. And well, you certainly proved that. Came through to win. So well done to you. Thomas McMillan will finish in second. Marlon McMillan will finish in third. Great drive to you, Marlon. Jordan Ross, well, he drove a super defensive drive there to hold off Jack Floyd, who finished in fifth. Nick Cummings, fantastic drive from you tonight, mate. That was uh, certainly, I didn't expect you to finish up that far up, and you've done a fantastic job to finish in sixth. Nick Cracknell, Michael Cracknell, will finish in seventh with Harley Haber finishing in eighth.
Great work from them as we head over to the second page. Mitchell McLeod gets ninth position with Carl Stokes rounding out the top ten. Jacob Knight, good drive, solid drive actually into 11th place with Wayne Pengilly making moves late to get up into 12th. Jake Maloney holds 13th with Jamie McKnight 14th. The Bryborg, Brian Borg, gets himself 15th and KRS, Guy Leach, rounds out the top 16. Then we move on to P17, Damien Johnson from Gone Rogue Motorsport. 18th will be Pi Slogger, 19th Greg Sharp. We saw him have an incident there in the dying stage of the, of the race. A very damaged David Kinman will finish in 20th. Zach Baker, 21st, we saw him have an incident with Harley Haber. Be quite ambitious and uh, really to tune up Harley there and give him a bit of a serve, but he'll finish in 21st. Michael Talianzic, 22nd. Luke Page, 23rd, and Mitchell Bales in 24th. And on to page four, Christian Smart in 25th. Shane Evans will get 26th in the end. Gary Cooper, Matthew Deer, and Matt Lepidavin in 27th, 28th, and 29th. Matt Morris rounds out the top 30 with Chris Barnes, 31st. And new tyres did not benefit Brenton O'Brien. Could only manage 32nd. There we go, on to 33rd. We have Bradley Rasu. Terrible drive for him in the end. We saw him get tangled up there at a very fast part of the track. And... Uh, end up in the wall in Ford 34th he uh, yeah had an incident there on the last turn which he would not be happy with he was the last of our people to take a stop and uh, was really fighting his way through was the fastest car on track but did not end up being his night Stephen Barger 35th Brett Hender 36th David uh, Nenedick in 37th uh, Kane Hewson 38th Brenton Hobson, night to forget for him. Welcome back, though, Brenton. Well done to you, mate, on your qualifying result. Better luck next week. Joshua Anderson will finish in 40th. And while we're hitting the retirees, James Scott, Stuart Coulter, Mark Newton not having a good uh, run. Zach Best actually struggling for one performance racing. He gets himself 44th out of all of that. Matthew Cloet, Scott Clark, Simon Pitt. And James Duckworth round out 48. And one more being Brett Loxton, who had himself nowhere to go on the opening lap of this event. Well, we're going to step aside very, very briefly when it comes to our AOSC action. When we come back, post-race coverage coming to you after this. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the West End Mazda Australian Online Supercars Championship, the post-race show here with Sim Speed TV on the iRacing Esports Network, and a race which was uh, a very difficult one for many, one that had to be worked hard for to get themselves over to the line, but many a driver had to really showcase what they were all about. Most importantly, though, Brady Myers taking home a victory out of this one. Going to talk to the driver who came home second, being Thomas McMillan, as we uh, interrupt him mid-conversation. Thomas, well, most importantly, 
it's a podium for you. It's a well-deserved podium at that, and arguably one that you've needed with a new team switch. Yeah, it's good to uh, get a good result in my first race for one performance racing. It's yeah, a bit of a redemption from my previous track record. Well, we saw how maybe a year ago from this point you found yourself at a track like this and found yourself in good qualifying form, maybe not race form. But in terms of Road Atlanta as a track, as a dynamic, surely it's one that really does suit uh, your driving style and the way that you like to run a V8 supercar. Yeah, it definitely does suit the way I drive. I love the way the track flows and all the left rights, all the, yeah, suits the way I drive. I've always been not too bad there. So, yeah, it was an awesome race. Chasing down Brady just sucks. Every time he would make a little mistake, I'd follow him, but just a little bit worse and I'd lose all the time back up. But, yeah, good win by Brady. Well, you put the pressure on. Ultimately, it wouldn't be enough. But the next few rounds of the championship, you got a nice little break coming up as well. Or maybe we might not say break. Scops coming up in the future as well. So uh, a lot of championships to fight for in this V8. Three in total. And ultimately, how are you feeling looking at putting in that effort and getting that drive and that determination in to pretty much set up a good run here when it comes to February into March? Oh, oh, I'm hyped, you know, I just want to put in a lot of laps and just get the results like it kind of showed tonight. So get ready for scops. Hopefully I'm not still banned, waiting on confirmation for that. But other than that, yeah, I'm ready. Well, hopefully he will be ready. But before we let you go, Mr. McMillan, any shout outs or sponsors? I'd like to thank all the guys at OPR. I'd also like to thank David Sanford being my spotter and helping me with all the fuel and telling me what the other cars are doing around me and also the sponsors at OPR, uh, Night Rider Designs um, and Euros, don't even know what that is, Driver Performance. Well, that's that's very helpful. He doesn't quite know who his sponsors are. He's uh, not expected to get up this high in this event. Thomas McMillan coming home in second position. Very quickly, Scott Fountain standing by with third position. What a great result for Craig Moretta Racing's Marlon McMullen. Yep, certainly was. Marlon, you uh, had a great result tonight. A, um, yeah, it was certainly talking you up in the qualifying. You've always been there or thereabouts. But, uh, yeah, to finally get on the podium again, you must be happy. Yeah, good day, guys. It was a, a bit of an interesting qualifying session. I'm glad I got a some form of a lap, and it was just sort of hard trying to find your own space. And it's just such a tight track, you know, when there's like 50 cars out there. If anything goes wrong in those first two laps, you're going to really sort of be chasing your tail for the rest of the session. But, I, I mean, as I know, qualifying's not the be-all, end-all. you got the race still ahead of you. you got 36 intense laps. And, I mean, that start, I think I went from 11th to 6th, just trying to avoid it all. And to sort of try to stay out there in my own sort of area. Like, I didn't feel like I had the pace to really sort of battle with McMillan, but we still had a really great battle because I just tried to, you know, just sit on his bumper the whole race, hoping he would make a few mistakes. But every time he did, they just weren't uh, the mistakes that I was sort of, not sort of hoping for, but you know what I mean, just sort of trying to get through around him. But other than that, you know, going from 11th to 3rd, it's a pretty good day. I mean, the strategy was all right. The car, it felt all right, but it just felt really tough out there. But it's good to have a little bit of pace uh, again, as you said, and, you know, I think I've got some good points tonight as well, so that's really good for uh, for our team at CMR. Yeah, you're certainly right, mate. It was um, yeah, an interesting track, as, as Road Atlanta, a very difficult one, and if you manage to keep yourself out of trouble, which is what you did tonight, as you said, you went from 11th to 6th in the first lap by just staying out of trouble. You look after your tyres, and you manage to kind of you know, put all the pieces of the puzzle together, you can generally find yourself in a good position, and you had the pace out right there towards the end. It looked like your car was slightly struggling for rear grip in those last few laps. How were you uh, for your tyres? I, I, I sort of did the, I think it was Jordan, he was the first one to come in on, on the pit stops, and I think it was lap 11 or 12. So I sort of, you know, I sort of followed him because I, I know we were sort of close in the point. So whatever he does, you know, I'm going to sort of pretty much sort of do, unless it's the wrong, wrong strategy altogether. But, you know, I, I took the gamble. I came in early, probably about four laps earlier than the other boys. But, you know, towards the end when we got that safety car, it was really, really good because I could sort of recall down the tyres. And I was just sort of hoping, you know, there's only sort of 10 or 12 laps to go. I haven't got the best grip compared to these guys but because the tyres are nice and cool. If I just use my head, sort of stay out of all the, the riffraff, if you want, sort of going on, on around me, I should be able to just sort of hold bay. And, yeah, I was just able to hold down in third. And, you know, if you can't win it, if you can get a podium, it's just, you know, it's just as good, to be honest. 
Yeah, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. It's uh, yeah, a bit of a surprise for me. A few four well, months ago, when you when you jumped on board with CMR, and you're certainly doing a fantastic job for those guys. Who gets it done for you over there? Oh, well, the whole team. You know, it, it, it's good when they sort of jump out, and all, all these guys. I mean, they're sort of new to high racing. So, as you said, I sort of uh, jumped ship to a, to a team that a lot of people wouldn't expect. But no matter where you go. It's just sort of the environment around you, and everyone in the team's really, really friendly. And you know, I've been able to settle, settle in. I, you know, I retired for a little bit. I, I wasn't on for about six months, but yeah, you know, it's nice to come back and have some really good, clean racing. And yeah, I thank Chris Moretta for giving me a shot at CMR because pretty much, you know, I could have gone to many, many teams, but I don't know. He just sort of had the right words, you know, to sort of tickle me that day. And yeah, I, I really like it at CMR. I'm just sort of able to be my own driver and you know, really sort of try and help the new up-and-coming guys and their pace is actually rapidly improving. So, you know, whenever they come out of the next AOSC round, they, they should have some serious pace. Oh, that's excellent. Well, thanks for jumping in and, uh, and joining us and uh, we certainly look forward to you being with us for next round. Cheers. Thank you for your time. Thanks for the broadcast. Well, there we see that. Uh, Marlon McMullen for Chris Maretta Racing. Uh, I should uh, stress as I make many different errors tonight, but Race winner, someone who didn't make many errors at all, Brady Myers. Brady, well, TTL finally get back to winning ways. And more importantly than that, a very stressful race on your part. A lot of battling here and there. But let's just talk about the middle part of the race. You see your rival, Jordan Ross, come down in, make a stop. And then all hell breaks loose in your battles with the likes of Haber, McMillan, McMullen and co. Yeah, that was a very intense part of the race. Um especially when I got that shove, that neck code shove from McMillan. I um, thought, oh, I don't really want any part of this, so I thought I'd um, play, take the strategy call and get out of it. Well, you managed to get yourself out of it, and that crucially left you into a good position coming over to the restart. And more importantly than that, really, Brady, was the fact that you saw Jordan Ross maybe on old tyres did you feel like that was going to be the big key point for you in terms of attacking that restart? The fact that your rival was probably on about 10 laps, maybe older tyres. You had that real opportunity to go out there and show Jordan Ross what you were worth. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like after the, well, I knew after, even after I pitted, we were catching him you know, a few tents here, a few tents there. So I knew we had we had pace on him, but I knew he wasn't going to make it easy for me. So I thought, uh, we'll um, just see what happens. But I managed to get a good run on the restart on the back straight, and that sort of thought, oh, I may as well go for it. <laughs> Nothing to lose. Well, nothing to lose at all for you in a race victory uh, it is for you. But looking forward over to the start of March because you have yourself a really, really important Imola race coming up as well. So that 650, how are you looking at preparations along with TTL for that? Yeah, coming on good. Um, I generally like Imola in, in the V8. I think I've done quite well there in the past. So I'm really keen to get there and, you know, show that we're a top runner again and show yeah that we're we're on the we're on the up well on the up you may be so before we let you go any shout outs to sponsors yeah just want to thank the guys at ttl they've been great in helping me with setups and everything this week and you know testing in that sort of thing uh big shout out to simworks our new sponsor um buyer designs hope i got that one right and uh down under graphics and you I guys can't correct you. as well. Well, I can't correct you on your sponsors. I don't know them myself. Freddie Myers there. Race victory then for him. But, Fonty, one last thing for you. What's your final thoughts then on proceedings that we've seen here at Road Atlanta? Oh, I've always liked Road Atlanta as a track. I think it's a fantastic place for, for battles and uh, lots of controversy and incidents. And, um, yeah, great race tonight. I think Brady drove a fantastic drive tonight. Jordan Ross, a little bit hard luck for him. Um, yeah, I guess the uh, the rubber didn't quite work in his favour tonight. But, yeah, all in all, pretty clean racing, really. I thought that it was going to potentially be a few more incidents. Um, Wayne Pengelly, definitely a standout drive from him tonight. Fantastic move there he made on Jamie at the end. And also, Jamie did a fantastic job. Didn't quite have the pace tonight that we've seen in him in recent weeks. Uh, potentially just didn't 
like the track. But uh, all in all, great, great event. And uh, I look forward to the next round. We don't have it next week because we've got the VRS, the Virtual Racing School V8 Supercar Online Premium Series kicking off for 2019. It's going to be a fantastic, fantastic season. We have lots of cool things in store. And, uh, yeah, I'm really excited about it. So am I indeed. But... That's something you can find on the iRacing Esports Network, along with so many other broadcasts that you are able to find. But for proceedings here this evening, that is all we are going to have time for. A massive thanks to LeBlanc, Sam, Blacklock Media, Knight Rider Design, and of course, West End Mazda. This has been the Australian Online Supercar Championship. The next round is March 1st. It's 650 Ks as they battle it out at the wonderful Autodromo Enzo Edino Ferrari, otherwise known as Imola. But for those who cannot wait, there is, of course, Monday Night V8, which always find themselves in some fantastic action, as well as the first round of the VRS V8 Supercars Online Premier Series, the number one league when it comes to Australian, or shall we say, Western Hemisphere motorsport in sim racing. But... For the time being, that's been Scott Fountain, Jay Kennedy, pause for dramatic effect, Kennedy, behind the cameras for this one. I've been Jake Sperry, and it is Brady's Bunch who find themselves at the top. TTL march on to Imola with a nice victory in the back pocket from Georgia.